Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of London, England. His name is Mr. Samuel Jack. Mr. Jack, how are you doing today? Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm very well, sir. Very, very well. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Um, yeah, you have a, uh, a album that's already released, I'm assuming. Um, Empty, crowded, empty Pockets, Crowded House, Volume 1. Um, That's right. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. But before we do, um, tell us a little bit more about Samuel Jack. Cool. Well, um, mine's, a, mine's a long story. But in short, I'm um, yeah, my name's Samuel Jack. I'm from born in London. Um, I spent most of my, well, so my formative years living in London and have led quite a nomadic lifestyle, travelled around a lot. Um, and I started out as a, I think I've been doing it, singing and writing music professionally now for maybe five years. Um, but I didn't start until I, until I was relatively late, until I was kind of in my early 20s. Um, before that, I hadn't even thought about music at all. I didn't play an instrument. I didn't... Um, know much about music at all and I kind of fell into it after college um, and yeah and, hit, and so then I joined like college bands and things like that and then I decided I wanted to make my own music and I got a little bit lucky and basically just knocked on a lot of doors and then um, and now here I am. Okay now, what was it about um, you said you kind of fell into it a little bit later had you not been in music before that time or? Not at all. I, 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 I've always loved music, like since a really early age. Um, I used to listen to, you know, my parents, particularly my father's um, record collection when I was, you know, really small. I've always loved music, but I, I, it never crossed my mind that I wanted to, you know, make my own. Um, and I went to college to study English and um, I, I used to do lots of creative writing. I used to write like poetry. Um, I used to be like a mad like hip hop fan, soul fan, blues, um, Motown, things like that. And then I, for whatever reason, thought it'd be a good idea to buy it. I bought a little toy piano, like a really small, little awful little piano. And I started to put poetry to music, you know, like using one finger to play the good piano because I didn't know how to play the thing. Um, and then I was working in a restaurant that had a, had a piano in. Um, I was working as a waiter and um, in between shifts I'd, I'd when, you know, when the place was closed I'd just, I'd just sit down and play the piano and eventually after doing that for two or three years I got a bit better at it um, and then yeah it was a very natural progression for me to put words to music and then I just kind of fell in love with performing and I haven't looked back Okay Did you um, um, let's see how I can word this when did you realize that you could sing? Because you um, you seem like or you sound like a real seasoned veteran. Um, how did that come about when you were, I mean, it's one thing to uh, pick up the piano and write poetry or, but when did you say, wait a minute, hold on. I sound pretty good. Do you know what, it was good, good question. People will ask me that from time to time. It's a good question. I, I can't 
there, there was one moment that I always that always sticks in my mind, and I wouldn't say it was like a, a, a an epiphany of a moment, but it was certainly the moment that uh, gave me some gave me the confidence to at least try and sing. And it was it was uh, actually it's at that restaurant that I talked talked to you about, and I um I was working there with a friend of mine, Jim, and uh, he was a really good pianist, and um, we got really drunk one night and when well, the doors the doors were locked and um, it was just kind of me and a bunch of the staff the other waiters and the bar senders and um, he said oh you should have a sing you know just can't sing something because he can't sing you know and he said uh, and he played um, a song called actually no do you know what he played he played um, Easy Like Sunday Morning by Lana Ritchie and um, he said go on sing that and I sang it and after after I sang it he said he's like you, you got you can sing you know you can sing man it's, it's a good, you've got a good voice I didn't really believe him but then what it did do is it inspired me to go home and sing in my bedroom or in the shower you know um, and yeah and I guess I just I, I realized I loved it and I think if you love something it's, it's it, it makes learning how to do it a lot easier you know yeah yeah I get it um... Now, you, let me just back up for one second. You said that you started going home and singing in the shower. I think everybody feels like they sound good in the shower. Um, <laughs> Best place in the world. Yeah, right. So, um, but, um, so when you begin to sing, um, how did you, um, how did you proceed with that? I mean, it's one thing for your friend to tell you, but did you decide to get on stage and start singing or how did that all come up? Well, I kind of, I kind of, um, it wasn't like a conscious decision. I, just, I, I, I joined like a college band, you know, like a, I guess you guys over there in America call it a garage band. Is that right? <laughs> you know, like, you know, practicing, playing, playing. Yeah, you know, and um, it was with a bunch of friends, a bunch of pals of mine at college and, and, and they were like, oh, you know, come play a bit of piano and have a bit of a sing. And we were just messing around. I mean, I think if you, you know, that's the beauty of music, particularly in like kind of uh, like what uh, I guess uh, like rock music. You know, ask you ask ask Dave Grohl or anyone how they all started. And they all started by just just messing around. You know, Pro I probably sounded absolutely awful when I first started. You know, like, I, I I don't even want to know what I sounded like back then. You know, but I think I just still. My, my inspiration, I, I always drew inspiration from um, like the soul greats, you know, Sam Cooke is a massive inspiration of mine. Um, I mean, there's, there's too many to list, but, you know, Benny King. Um, and, I, and I just love the way that, you know, that music is delivered with something that was very, I don't know, it's, it's something that really captivated me. It's, 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 you know, blues, uh, listen to B.B. King slay a vocal when he's wailing on his guitar. To me, there's just, there's just nothing like it. It just sounds so much more real to me than hearing uh, an indie band or a rock band. And, and that's just my opinion, of course. Music is subjective completely, but there's just something about the... For me, it was like, you know, the, the pain, the, the history of like blues and you can just hear it, you know, the, the, those vocals are just drenched with emotion, you know, soaking in just, a, you know, this proper heart, you know, real, real deep kind of stuff. And, and I think I just, I was so inspired by that and that coupled with just messing around in, in the garage with my friends. And I guess it just kind of moved from me thinking that I wasn't very good to me really enjoying it and then suddenly we'd do the odd show we'd go and play in the local bars and stuff and and it was a very organic thing for me and now I just I just love to sing I just want to sing all the time you know yeah well you're, you're definitely good at it um, I was really impressed with uh, the uh, your release uh, which is available now right that's correct yeah so I've um, so I've actually broke the album into three volumes um, of Empty Pockets, Crowded Parts. Um, uh, yeah, the first, first volume is, is every, available everywhere now. Um, volume two is going to follow very soon um, in a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks' time. I've just today actually released the first single from volume two. It's a song called My People, which came out today. Um, and then there's going to be a third volume as well towards the end of the year to sort of tie up a 15-ish track album. 
Okay, yeah, one of my questions was uh, with volume one, there's only five tracks on there, but now you explain that there's two more volumes coming. Um, so is that going right. to that's going to make um, 15 tracks total? About about that, yeah. Okay. I decided to, I decided to break it down just because um, really it's just to feed uh, the, the sort of consumer now, nowadays with, with things like Spotify and stuff, you know, unless, uh, you know, I'm not selling stadiums out right now, you know, I've got a, a good fan base that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but I don't, no one i think it's a very interesting thing to you know unless you're a super unless you're a super band or you're already um you know world famous worldwide no one really cares about an album these days um in my opinion you know it feels a bit more like people what people really care about is songs individual songs um and i wanted to cut that album into three parts because what that does is it gets it it allows my listeners my audience to you know, let those, just those five, initially those first five songs, you know, it gives them a space and light of their own and time to kind of sit and people to listen to and work out what their favorite songs are. Um, and it also gives me the chance to continue to release music throughout the rest of the year. Whereas if I just released a whole 15 track album, then I got to go and write another 15 track album, you know? <laughs> um, and so it's just, it's just it's, it felt like a really good way of doing it. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping it's going to do me in good stead for the rest of the year. Okay, so there was a, there was a strategy behind it. Now, are um, all the volumes, are they somewhat connected? Because I'm looking at the tracks on uh, volume one, it's Trouble, Let Me Go, Gonna Be All Right, Closer and Real Love. Um, is that, are you taking us through a story or are you taking us through uh, different parts in um, your, your life or? Yeah, I mean, the, the collection, all the songs, I mean, the, the, the volumes as themselves aren't connected other than the fact that they're all part of one one album. Okay. Um, you know, there's no inter-story, but the album itself is, as a whole, is just really a, a story of my journey up till today, you know, right up to right now. Um, you know, I've done, I've been around, you know, I've been around the block a bit, you know, and with, with music and I've, I've been doing music for a long time. Um, and yes, I mean, there's lots of sort of themes on there about, uh, you know, love and loss and adventure and, um, uh, you know, I, I attack things like mental health, um, which is a, which is a, an important thing to me, aware, mental health awareness. Um, and it's, it's really just a collection of all these songs that I've written. And I've written these songs over the space of, well, I've written, I wrote the majority of them in Los Angeles um, not so long ago, but the whole album itself is probably take is probably about a year year plus in the making. Um, so it's a labour of love, you know. They're not just songs to me. It's, they're very all very important. I was gonna actually, I was gonna. I've never actually told anyone this. About eight nine months ago, I was gonna. I had an album. I thought I had an album ready. I was like, I'm gonna release this. This is it. I finished. I'm finished the album. And then I went off to Los Angeles just to do a couple of writing sessions. And um, all of a sudden, I wrote eight or nine new songs, <laughs> and I thought, and I thought, oh, I've got myself an upgrade here. These ones are way better. Let's do the, let's use these ones. So it's been really lovely to, uh, really nice to get them out in the world. Okay, and um, so tell us about Volume One. Um, give us some kind of insight on uh, where you were going with uh, Volume One. Well, I mean. I didn't have again. I, I've tried to see it as as one out all three all three volumes as one album, but in terms of volume one specifically, I mean, gonna be alright, which was the lead the lead song from volume one, like my lead single. I wanted to write something um, uplifting and 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 kind of um, you know impassioned in that it's it's, it's I actually, I actually if I'm honest, it's, it's, it's quite hard to write. Um, happy songs, <laughs> you know. It's it's like one of the hardest things to do in the world. I mean, ask any any songwriter worth their salt. If you want a good album, you want to get your heart broke. You know, you want to get you, you want to get your heart broke. You want your woman to leave you, and you, you want you want some pain, and then you can write a good album. But gonna be alright is a song um, really close to my heart. It's about um, it's about my my struggle with mental health problems over the years, um, and my and my getting better. Um, I'm I'm better than right now. I'm, I'm better than I've ever been uh, with dealing with those sort of problems. 
Um, and I, for example, Amy Winehouse, I always thought Amy Winehouse was amazing at it. She, she'd write a really kind of quite dark lyric and have like quite a happy tune. I mean, like uh, Rehab, for example, that tune by Amy Winehouse. Right. It's, it's, a song, it's, it's a dark song. If you actually, if you just read it and you didn't listen to the music, you're like, oh, dude, this is, this is all a bit, you know, this is all a bit heavy. But the tune is really happy. And with Gonna Be All Right, I kind of talk about my problems with, you know, anxiety and depression. But the message of that song is that, you know, I think everyone needs to hear that it's going to be all right sometimes and you've just got to keep telling yourself that it's going to be all right. And <clears throat> I think I achieved that with that song. For the rest of that, for the rest of volume one, um, I mean, there's some songs on there about one, I don't mind saying this, I don't mind telling you, about one particular girl um, in my life um, that it didn't work out, uh, which is brilliant stuff for a songwriter. You're like, okay, let's sit down, <laughs> let's write this one out. Um, and then Trouble as well is a, is a song I wrote in Los Angeles. Um, I wrote that during a time of, of difficulty. So I guess it's a, I guess volume one in a nutshell is, is, a, is, a, is a representation of my character and my emotional experiences over the last few years. Yeah, definitely. I can hear the, uh, the commitment, so to speak, in the, in the music. Um, I love uh, Real Love and I also love Trouble. Uh, I like the five. Those are two of my favorites. Um, you just kind of get down at those, and I uh, I like that. Um, now yeah, you, said that, <laughs> you said that you were influenced. Uh, at reading your bio, you were inf uh, a lot of influence from Motown and some of the other great, um, you know, soul soul music performers from the past. And you definitely can hear that in your music. Um, so kudos to you for that. Um, what I want to do right now is I want to pause and see if we Man. can be in um, trouble um, and see if we can play that. Hopefully we don't get dinged sure. by, by YouTube. Um, this is Samuel Jack in trouble. Enjoy. Yeah. We'll continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, back to our conversation. All right, uh, Samuel, we're back. Uh, Trouble is a great song. I love it. And I'm sure people will love it, too. Um, now, we are going through this uh, global pandemic, um, COVID-19, a COVID-19. How has that affected... Um, you going forward, how is that, uh, or has it delayed some things? You said that you just released a single from volume two. Um, is there any talk about maybe pushing, That's it, right. pushing it back a little bit more or delaying until COVID does its thing? Um, good question. <clears throat> it's, had, it's, had a, it's had a massive effect, no doubt. Um, I mean, on everyone, of course, but in terms of um, me personally, it was, it was crazy timing. I was actually set up to have a very sort of intense period of touring right now. Um, I was launched, I was due to launch, well, I, I launched digitally my, the first volume of the album on the 23rd of March. And that was in my country in England, that was actually the first day of lockdown. <laughs> um, I was due to, have, due to have a big old launch party in London that night, um, which didn't happen. And I've, I've, I have missed out on several touring opportunities I was on a going on a radio tour. Um, I was doing some more European dates and some more stuff domestically as well. Um, had plans to come back out to the West Coast um, in the US as well, um, which of course have all been removed. Um, but in terms of pushing stuff back, what I've kind of me and my team have decided is that we're going to carry on releasing, um, which is why it's, it's, it feels really good. That we broke the album down to three parts we can kind of drip feed the album from now until you know the end of the year um so you do lose you certainly lose momentum as an artist when you can't play live but i'm trying to use the internet where i can i'm doing lots of cover videos and live streams um where possible um to try and you know sort of keep engagement up with the, my audience um but fortunately again because i'm releasing a lot of music um, there is a natural amount of engagement now for me anyway, if that makes sense. Right. Um, and in some, some ways, without being like 
you know, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing that we're all going through right now. But in some ways, there is an opportunity here for, for creatives, not just musicians, in that they have a worldwide audience, which are all at home on their phones and on their, you know, laptops. Um, so in some, some ways, it's quite good. It's a quite a good time to release and have your music heard and consumed, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's a really interesting time, and I think that the, the, the key thing that I've been just remembering is, is that we've all got to kind of adapt, adapt to survive, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big effects, but we're, we're, we're getting by. Okay. Um, and let me let me just back up a little bit. Um, Empty pockets, crowded heart, Volume One. Is that because you said you've been around for a while? Is this your first? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it is. It's my debut album. It's my debut album. I've never, I've never written a whole album before. Um, I've been around a bit in the eye. What I really mean by that is, 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 you know, not in the public eye. But I've, I've been knocking on doors and, and learning my craft for, for, you know, five or six years now. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, as an artist, I'm, I'm brand new. You know, um, I've, I've sort of come out of, come out of nowhere really. Um, and and things are going really good our ends. We're getting some sort of bigger and better radio plays. Um, our streams numbers are going up. We're getting on good, better playlists. Um, so yeah, it is my debut album. And, it, and because of that, it's even more, like you get nervous, man, as an artist. Like you put your first record out, you just don't want, you know, you go to bed at night and you're like, oh man, like, I put, I'm releasing the first part of my album tomorrow. What if, you know, what if everyone hates it? You know, what am I gonna do, you know? Um, it's crazy. I've never really been under that sort of pressure before, um, but I've got. I'm really lucky. I've got a really good team around me that are, um, you know, positive, and we, we're, we're always changing and maneuvering strategy to try and just get the music out to as many people as possible. You know. Okay. And um, this particular um, release. When was this release? Um, volume one was released on the 20, 23rd of March this 23rd year. Of March. Okay. And yeah. it still relatively new how has it been received thus far you said you're getting a lot of radio play yeah it's, it's been it's been received, received really well we, we picked up a couple of in terms of streaming um we, there's a sort of coveted playlist over here called new music friday on spotify um and that's kind of the playlist is like the holy grail in some respects for some artists like you, you want to be on that playlist because it's got a big listenership we got that with gonna be all right um and i've had a bit of Good, you know, decent national radio play. Um, I get I get a lot of regional radio play. So I guess the equivalent for you, you guys is, uh, in America is kind of like um, state, you know, interstate radio rather than nationwide. Yeah. I don't know how it works over there. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. Um, and so that's been really good. And yeah, I mean, in terms of like PR and stuff, I've had some really nice kind of uh, smaller write-ups about it. I've done a bunch of interviews. And for for a, you know, I'm on a, I'm on a small record called label. Um, with a small and amazing team of people um, and we've done we're, we're, we're doing a good job I'm really happy the way it's been received so far fingers crossed um, but the, and again the interesting thing is I've got volume two of the album coming in in a couple of weeks time um, and then volume three in October so you know some people might really like volume one and then they might listen to volume two and just absolutely right. hate it you know so I, i've got to go through everything that an artist does when they release an album three times you know? right okay so cool. um producers um did you self-produce this or did you work with other producers i work with other producers i, I like to kind of co-produce or certainly have a you know a, a large creative input but I'm, I'm, I'm not a producer i'm a songwriter um my long, my long-standing um, sort of production and, and co-writer is a chap called uh, Owen Thomas, um, who I do the, the mainstay of my work with. Um, that coupled with a, uh, a woman called Lily May Young, who's a, a, a co-writer of mine. We, we've worked together for a long time, um, so we write a lot of songs together. Um, I write a lot of songs of my own as well, um, but I always like to work with different producers and bring different people in for different flavors and vibes and. I work with a great guy called Kyle Ryden, um, who's had great success in kind of the pop world, really, for Gonna Be All Right. Um, and a ch chap called Mackenzie Jameson, who um, is a very young, uh, sort of new, upcoming producer over here in England, who um, is just a little genius. So I just love working with him. He's one of my, one of my favorite producers I've ever worked with, really. Um, so I like to mix it up, but I don't have, 
and I like to be a part of it, but I don't have, um, I haven't, if I'm honest, the truth is I haven't worked with that many producers. I know what I like and when I find it, I, I just want to, I'm like, I want to work with you dudes. <laughs> like, you and me are going to make this album right now. Um, but I've had fun, I've had, I've had fun learning, you know, meeting with people on the way. Okay. And um, I'm just looking over your bio. Um, did I read that your dad was, uh, was he a film director? That's right. Yeah, he was um, quite a long, long, long time ago. He was actually uh, over in Hollywood doing doing stuff over there. Um, he's um, he's retired now, and he he lives in a tiny little house in in London, apartment in London. He's a, he had a really rich sort of career, up and down career. He, he, he had a lot of success in the early part of his career, and then and then less less so um, towards the latter part of his career. But yeah, he did some amazing things. And when I was a kid, it was always it was kind of awesome because I got to grow up on a on a film set, you know. Oh wow! He um, yeah, he he got a couple of Emmys and a couple of Baftas, um, and did really well. And when I was young, it was I had I had a very nomadic lifestyle when I was a kid. We, we travelled around a lot, you know. Yeah, um, when he was working abroad, or I lived in Johannesburg for a couple of years when he was doing a doing a movie uh, a series like a like a sick uh, drama over there. To the BBC, um, and then you know he'd be in, in and out of America and stuff. But and I guess I kind of like fell in love with um, fell in love with like with the world a little bit. But I'm so glad that I didn't go into it because <laughs> I'm just it's just I'm just glad. I just I love music too much, you know. And plus, me and my me and my dad are very very different. You know, we're just very very different people. We don't have, we don't you know. So I'm kind of glad I avoided that and, and, and landed on my feet with music, I think. Yeah, I was, one of the questions I was going to ask you was you, did, you didn't get the acting bug, so you kind of explained No, I, I just, it's, I think it's, it's so funny, isn't it? Music to me is the most rich and real and authentic form of expression there is, particularly soul and blues music, right? Whether it's acting, you're actually just pretending to be someone else, right. you know? That's essentially what you do, you know, and and that's just my opinion. Of course, I love I love movies. I'm a film geek, you know. I love going to the movies, and uh, I love I love Hollywood blockbusters, and I love like B movies, you know, independent film. I love all that kind of stuff as well. But I just um, it's just not. It would never going to be for me. Okay. Well, uh, Samuel, uh, it was great speaking to you today, man. Now, where can people uh, purchase your music? Absolutely everywhere, all, all sort of um, digital platforms, uh, Amazon, iTunes, um, Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, um, Tidal, everything, everything everywhere. Okay. Well, um, yeah, man, good luck with uh, Empty Pockets, Crowded House, Volume 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Since those Thank you, mate. Forthcoming. Um, and I, like I said, I listened to the five tracks, and man, if Volume 2 and Volume 3 are like Volume 1, uh, get ready, man, because uh, I, I think it's going to blow up for you. Um, well, fingers crossed. Hopefully, um, <laughs> you know, COVID is not, uh, you know, around. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Keep your fingers crossed and get out there and start promoting. How is it uh, where you are? Are you, are you I mean, okay over there? Yeah, I'm in California, and things are slowly starting to open up a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be a while before, um, you know, things get back to normal, so to speak. Um, but, you know, you just got to keep your, just keep your, you know, wits about you and just hang in there, man. And um, yeah. I know for artists, you know, I speak to artists all the time who you know, had stuff planned for 2020 and now that's sort of delayed. So um, hopefully. Yeah, I just want to get back on the, I just want to get back on the road. Yeah. Yeah, and you said you, you plan know. on touring in the U.S. too, coming up hopefully. So yeah, I've, done, I've spent a lot of time over in Los Angeles, obviously, just for the well, I have done over the last few years. But um, yeah, I've, I've played a bunch of shows in LA before, um, and I definitely want to come out and do. I, I spent I've spent time in San Diego and San Francisco, and kind of all up the coast, and I just I love that part of the world. It's, it's, I love I love California. Yeah, and your music, yeah. I think your music fits in perfectly for the uh, for the U.S. market too. It's 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 raw and it's gritty and it's so. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's got legs there, and and, and I and I yeah, I'm definitely keen whenever I can just to come back out and, and, and play. One, do you know one of the best shows I ever played 
not because it was a massive venue, but just because it was a special night for me. It was a, I played at the Hotel Cafe in, in uh, Hollywood. Okay. Um, which is a small, smallish venue, but a, a venue full of history, you know, like everyone, everyone that I loved played there. Yeah, right. And I tell you, man, it's the, the best, one of the best nights of my life. Like since I was a kid, I used to watch like YouTube videos of all my favorite people play there. And then my agent, uh, my manager put me, put the show there. It was only like a hundred people, and we had, you know, and I, and I sold it out a hundred people, and it was just the best night. And I got real drunk afterwards and had the best <laughs> mug of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mate, right. thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. Now people can find you on all the uh, Twitter, IG, Facebook, all the other social media sites. That's right. Yeah. All right. Do you, have a, do you have a website, Sam? Yeah, www.samuelljackofficial.com. Okay. Um, and then yeah, we usual. Okay, so we'll put uh, links to um, Samuel's uh, music and also his social media, as well as his website on our website at bringbacksellmusic.com also in the show notes if you're listening or if you're watching this on our youtube channel mr jack appreciate you taking the time today sir thank you very much mate all the best look after yourself all right you too man and good luck with um empty pot empty pockets crowded heart volume one two and three be on the lookout That's the one all right thank you man all right have a good one That's Samuel Jack from the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Samuel Jack. You can find out more about Samuel on his website. Also, you can find out more on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Todd Woodson. See you next week.